energy to do work. You can have a bigger effect. Okay, well, those two go together. As you lower your entropy and consciousness, you get more power, more ability to have an effect. Lowering entropy, spiritual growth, increasing the quality of your consciousness, evolving one's consciousness, and growing up are all different expressions of the same thing. Love is defined as the fundamental expression of a low entropy consciousness. It's not that a low entropy consciousness is loving. A low entropy consciousness fundamentally is love. Next results. Okay, the larger reality is teeming with life. Okay, that's because evolution is a very robust concept. And as we know in our biology, in our, our physical biology system, anywhere that the system will support a life form, some sort of life form goes there. Every niche is filled. Well, it's the same in the, in the, in the larger picture, in consciousness that is evolving. Every kind of life form that can be there is there. And this is just a tiny, tiny, tiny little, little slice of it. It's teeming with life. There's, there's probably billions more life out there than there is life here. Okay? It's full of sentient entities. Okay, many different reality frames or dimensions containing sentient conscious entities exist and are interacting according to their own rule sets. Okay, what does that mean? They're all doing the same thing we're doing pretty much. They're just in different frames. They still have the same, the same job that we do, and that is grow up, interact, decrease the entropy. Why is that their job? Because that's the job of the system. The system exists. It has to lower its entropy. That's how it evolves. There's only three states you can be in. You can be evolving, you can be static, standing still, or you can be de-evolving, which is dying. So you're either evolving or you're dying because being in the middle is unstable. It's an unstable state. You can't just stay the same. Change happens. Everything changes. So you're either evolving or you're dying. So why does the consciousness system evolve? Well, the second choice is a bad choice. So it evolves. How does it evolve? It evolves by lowering its entropy. It evolves by creating a lot of smaller units of consciousness that interact with their free will so they can grow and lower their entropy. Without free will, you can't lower any entropy because you can't learn anything. It's all just a script you're following. Okay. Okay. Growing up means growing toward, becoming means becoming love, and you do that by eliminating fear and ego. The opposite of love is not hate, it's fear. Okay, this is uh, what it looks like. This is just kind of a cartoon to give you a little perspective. What I have in the green circle, said so PMR, that's our universe. That's our physical reality. And that is a billion times bigger compared to the rest of it than it really is. Okay, that's all of our universe, including us. Now, what's inside of the red line? You see I've labeled that OS. That's our system. That's our physical reality plus all of non-physical, which means other than physical, that interacts with our physical reality. Okay, so all of that stuff where you interact with Uncle Frank who died last week and so on, you know, that's all part of OS, right? That's all a lot of the paranormal stuff. The, the reality that we generally think of as the non-physical is really just this little part that's inside the red ring. That's just that part of that non-physical interacting with us because if we interact with it here, then it's defined to be inside that red ring. That's just the part of the non-physical we interact with. Well, what's all this other stuff? Well... Everything outside of that red ring is stuff that doesn't know we exist. We have no idea that it exists. It has no idea that we exist. Okay? It's out there. The only way to know about that is to go out there and experience it. Okay, here's other PMRs. This is PMR 1, 2, that's us. Then there's K, you know, dot, 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 K. You can tell I'm a physicist, right? I do things like that. 1, 2, dot, 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 K. These are others. <laughs> Because they're, they're different than physical, they're not quite as constrained, enough to make it really a physical place, but it's not entirely unconstrained like the rest of this is. But there's lots of these. I, I just have a few. Like I say, I've been in about 20 or 30 of these. Um, I've been in probably 10 or 12 of these big ones. What are these big ones? Well, the reality is kind of broken up into organizational units. 
that the best way I can say is each one represents a kind of experimental protocol. Okay, it's the way things are done. All of these units are involved in um, developing consciousness, lowering consciousness entropy. That's what they're all about. But they go about it in different ways. It's different experiments. Our, ex our experiment, or the experiment that we're kind of part of, is one of the more lawful experiments. That, way, that means there's more rules. Some of these have a lot less rules. Some of them just have different rules. You can't just, if you want to find the best way to lower your entropy, if you're this big consciousness system, you don't just do one thing and say, well, that's good enough. You do everything you can think of. Right? This is evolution. Evolution fills every gap, explores every idea, and sees what works. Well, there's a whole lot more ideas than just the one that creates this physical matter reality, and that's what all these other things are doing. That's what these other physical realities are doing. That's what these other big frames are doing. So within this frame, it's, it's, a, it's a probably, a, I would say, on a scale of, of 1 to 10, it's probably about a, an 8 in the rule, in the number of rules, and how con constrained it is by those rules. Now, again, you need, you need rules to constrain things, otherwise you don't have traction as far as your ability to learn. Without the rules that make this physical reality, it's very, very difficult to learn. Think of a, uh, a football team. I know football means something different to you than it does to me, but it won't matter in this example. Think of a football team, and the football team doesn't have any rules. Maybe it has one rule, and that's get the ball to the goal. And that's the only rule it has. So you've got two teams with a bunch of people on both teams, and that's the only rule they have. Would that be an interesting game? No. What would happen? It'd be zero zero at the end of the you know the last quarter, wouldn't it? Because it would just be this big lump of people, unless one team was a whole lot bigger and stronger than the other. I mean, teams are generally pretty evenly matched. It just wouldn't be much fun. You'd just see a whole bunch of people, you know, in a fight for you know three hours, and then you'd go home. You know, it would not be interesting. So we have rules. Actually, makes the game viable. It turns it into a game. It makes something interesting. Something's going on there. There's interaction. There's planning. There's plots. There's strategy. You get all that with rules. If you don't have rules, not much goes on. So rules make a difference. It makes a different game. All of these things are playing a slightly different game. And these big units are playing generally a different game. They're playing rugby, you know, instead. They're doing an entirely different game. Or maybe this one over here is doing basketball. You know, it's a different rule set, but similar. Next. Okay. Some logical uh, Im implications of all this. What about time and space? Can we visit the past or the future and interact with it? The answer to that is yes. We can go to the future. We can go to the past. Um, they really, there's four things involved here. You know, it's not like you think. You know, it's not the, that you go back in the past, you change something, and everything changes afterwards. You know, that's a Hollywood thing. It doesn't work like that. The way it works is that the future is not a done deal. It's a probable reality. It hasn't happened yet. What makes it an actual reality is free will, which happens only in the present. Okay, so here we are in the present. This is where our free will gets interacted. And the free will of a, of a rock rolling downhill is just to keep on rolling. It doesn't have a whole lot of decision space. We have a lot more decision space. But all the energy patterns, the storms, the volcanoes, everything, you can predict Basically, what's going to happen in the next time increment? That's just probability. It's not necessarily going to happen, but you can predict what you think is most likely to happen. Then you go to the next time increment, you can predict what's likely to happen based on the last one happening. So each